Hello, Acron fans. This is another test stream for the Acron Justin TV channel, my Acron Justin TV channel. Now I'm just trying to test it with a actual Ethernet connection rather than using wireless, which I was using before and did not work out very well, as I'm sure all of you would know. So I'm just going to double check, make sure that people on the IRC channel know about this stream. And then I will start showing one replay, probably. I need to go to bed earlier tonight, so one replay and then. I will head off. So this replay will be between a couple players I actually haven't seen before. There's a replay on game replays that I saw that was between two players who had what looked like clan tags for Cyber Athlete League and Team Liquid, or Cyber Athlete Pro League and Team Liquid. I'm not 100% sure about whether that was actually accurate, but that's what I f was figuring anyway from what I saw. The tags were CPL and TL. Anyway, so let's start this game. Get it going, make sure that the frame rates actually are good. That's what I'm really doing this for. It looks like my bit rate is halfway decent when it comes to actually streaming this. So, hopefully, that will mean that the frame rate will actually be high enough to be watchable. It won't be a total slideshow for everyone as it usually is. So, let's get this started. Get on to the observer display. And it is Cyberboss versus Recusor, or Recusor. I'm not sure exactly how they're supposed to be pronounced, and I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. Anyway. Starting up, we have Cyberboss is playing Grekim. He's playing Grekim, blue player in the top right corner. This is on hills, by the way. And Rakuzer has not yet chosen his race. I'm just going to go back, double check. He is, in fact, choosing to play CISO. So we're going to see a CISO, CISO versus Grekim, which is wonderful. I enjoy seeing CISO play, or at least I kind of miss CISO, to be honest. I really do. I haven't seen them play a lot recently, and Grekim has been played a lot in the last few months. Hasn't been played so much in the last few weeks. Vector had gotten really popular, but it's also nice to see them. CISO, however, haven't seen them in a long time. Anyway, Recuse are actually going for a very fast rush strategy, getting two importers and three RPs on Liquid Crystal, which means he's going to be going for a very fast, probably armory-based strategy, likely proxy armories. I have been playing against this, actually. Not from this guy, but from another player who isn't on this channel. He was using it on me, and it didn't work. Managed to pull it off, but it was still pretty t tough. He was doing it, and then he was undoing it, and then he was doing it again, and just really keeping me on my toes. I'm not sure if Recuser is going to be doing the same thing, but I hope he will, because that will be very exciting to watch. Anyway, I'm just going to fast forward up to the present so that we actually see what players are doing, because both players, or Cyberboss is at the present, and Recuser is fast forwarding beyond that. Recuser are actually building another QPRP, so he's got a halfway decent tech based. RP setup. He's, gonna, he's not going to need a lot of RPs, a lot of LC for infantry if he's going for that. This one marine looks to be going to scout, and it will be finding that the Arcticus is set up tank as normal, and that and that Cyberboss is actually going for a more economic strategy, getting five RPs in his main base and two in his expansion on LC and one on QP. So fairly standard opening for basically safe, not rush build so much as just defensive build, while just jumping, jumping about 45 seconds into the future, we see that Recuser has started building a lot of infantry. He's got quite a bit of infantry when he is looking, and his marine is ju just going around, not even attacking yet, just went around the entire base. He's probably going to start harassing from behind. No, he's actually decided to go for the triad, so Recuser in the future is going to be attacking the, tri the triad. Cyberboss is going to have to deal with this. He has about 45 seconds to deal with it, though. Back in the present, 45 seconds earlier, he's going to be... Getting an Octo up here, he isn't using it to defend, though he really should be. He knows that the attack is happening, he sees it on his own timeline, and I, I'm not going to switch to the timelines yet, but I will... In case you're wondering, I can actually switch to the player view on the replay, which is a really nice feature of replays, but I want it... Not this version, Next, probably next version of the game. I'm going to double check this, though. I'll be able to set this little display to show up for any player, not just for the observer, which would be really handy. For now, it doesn't exist, and I don't really want to get away from this, because it's a very handy view to see what everyone's doing. So anyway, Recuser, of course, not focused at this point in time. He is focused further in the future, and Cyberboss is focused on the present, and hasn't started to take care of this Marine yet. And from Recuser's point of view, he was up here, and he definitely is getting a lot of damage, and he didn't actually end up destroying that Seppi. He's leaving it alone. But he is going to attack that Articus. Jumping back about three minutes, he decided... Not really to change much. Looks like he just wanted to double-check everything was going fine in the past. Jumping back to the present about two minutes up from when we were... We see that Recuser is actually building a reef with that threatened Seppi, getting another Octo set up, and the Octo is actually defending, so this Marine will have to run away, or at least run away temporarily. It looks like it is still going to be... No, it's going straight back to base. It's not going to be running away at all, or not going to be staying in base at all. It's going to be running away, regrouping with the rest of the infantry. 
Still only one armory. I'm a bit surprised. Recuser actually has quite a few resources, quite a lot of marines, and he could easily build three or four armies. He has a factory coming up, which is good, but he doesn't have a lot of armories for what he's going for. Really, this is a fast infantry strategy. I'm surprised he hasn't started building up the armories. On the other hand, we see that Cyberbus is actually getting very fast tech, getting advanced forces very quickly, getting Seppies as well, and jumping back, just to double check, getting only one Seppi, must have made a mistake on that other Seppi. Probably going to set up a Sparrow for a Spire, and an or from better per generation position, but he is just getting advanced structures, and it'd be a lot faster to set up a Spire and then build another Faro than to build a Faro for the Spire. He isn't actually doing either, either of those right now, while Recuser is setting up back in his base. So this is a total echo attack. He's basically echoing away the entire attack, setting up his main economy, and instead of going for the main attack. So we see going back in the past, he has actually undone that entire attack that we saw before. And this is still the same timeline we had before, so everything that happened, happened, and unhappened now. So Recuser completely undoing that attack, total echo attack, very clever little strategy, but that's not uncommon. So Recuser is also focusing on a stronger economy to make himself more secure. And here we are, here's that Spire I was talking about that Cyberboss has built, and also getting very fast gate tech. Wow, Cyberboss is playing like it's patch 0.8.00. This is really old school strategy. And yeah, here's the Pharopod too. He's getting Pharopod, chronoponing by Pharopods. Holy crap, this is a five minute mark too. He's actually pulling it off. I am, I'm amazed. This is, I mean, this is on version 1.1010 and we're seeing like 0800 strategies here. So, wow, talk about a sick, cyclical metagame going on. I mean, I don't know if that's actually what's meant to be happening. I don't look, it doesn't look like either player is really focusing on a chrono shenanigans in the moment. Except, like I said, Sour Boss will start chrono back that Pharopod. I gotta keep an eye on that thing. Because that is going to be our big, exciting part of the match. And another Pharopod is being built as well in the main base. But this is the Pharopod that's going to be most exciting, most relevant, because I'm sure Sour Boss is going to start chrono that as soon as he gets the chance. He doesn't, definitely has the resources. He will very soon have the position he wants, I'm sure. Getting another mount, or getting a mount as well. I've never seen a Grekham get a mount. That's new. It's the construct for Grekham, but you never see it. I don't know why, honestly, but never see it. I think he might be under the impression that you need a mound to get cr to Chronoport units, which you don't need since sometime early in the... I think before beta, actually. And now the Farapod is attacking you. The Farapod will be starting to deal some damage. Mechs have been set up, so Recuser is definitely prepared for an air attack. And here we have the Chronoport going on. So the Chronoport has occurred, and that is going to be... Cyberboss is actually following it along. He does have this current port for our pod, sending it in, not quite the unbelievable pass yet. Starting to attack these forces before they actually become relevant, but they are going to destroy that far pod far quickly, far too quickly for it to actually do anything useful. So Cyberboss unfortunately not able to make that far pod work. Another far pod coming in, however, and it may actually be able to do something. And recuse or Cyberboss is right next to the unbelievable pass. Watching that far pod get himself killed, can't do anything about it unless he undoes the entire chrono port, which I'm sure he likely will, seeing as that chrono port was a complete waste of time. And Yes, indeed, he is... Or I think... Looks like... We'll see in the red time wave. Looks like in the red time wave he was setting it up to progenerate, but he appears to have not done that. So, still going back in time with it, trying to do something with it as best he can. Going for the factory instead of going for the mass of infantry. Not a bad idea. The factory is definitely useful building, but it probably won't go down quickly enough. That being said, Recuser doesn't have any way of getting back at this. All of his forces are set up to try to deal with the Farapod. Unfortunately, they are too late. The Farapod has already chronoported back. He chronoport back around. I was going to bookmark this. Chronoport back too early, and Recruiser actually is double checking right next to the playable pass. He will be able to. Almost, he won't be able to. Or he is able to see it. He does have a special ops, which is able to see it, but the special ops will be targeted and destroyed. And now the Farpod can just go nuts on the base. The Farpod completely closed, completely unable to be seen. No special ops, nothing to actually destroy it. And Recruiser doesn't have anything that he could use. Back up in the present, about three minutes up from now, Recruiser does have gay tech. He does have. The mechs he would need to build Chrono Porters, but he hasn't built Chrono Porters yet in the present. Double checking about 30 seconds before that. Another 30 seconds before that. No, he has not built any. He's building Gate Tech at the 656 mark and back at the 523 mark, which is when he was getting attacked very heavily. He hasn't actually built anything up. And the Far Pod is going to be even more powerful than that. It looks like Cyberboss has moved it around. So Cyberboss will be in a very good position. This is basically why Far Pod Chrono Porting was so popular back in the day. But of course, people learned to adapt to it. That being said, it looks like it's still becoming very useful. And yes, Cyberboss is coming in another Farapod, which won't be quite as useful as the one that was chronoported back earlier. 
Regardless, that is still a very powerful opening strategy, very powerful rush with the Fire Pods. He should just let me double check. I think he actually managed to hit the four minute mark, which was the old Yes, he did! He got the four minute mark exactly. That was the old timing, and I'm actually a bit surprised that that was possible. He must have really focused on that. That being said, Recuser didn't really attack with anything. He had tons of units to attack with, and he never attacked, so Cyberboss was able to get away with it. The main metagame shift that made it possible to avoid getting hit by Chronocortic Pharopods was that Pharopods are quite expensive, and Chronocortic is quite expensive. The game was actually patched to make it more expensive, so it was easier to counter. And since... Then, Firepods haven't really been used. It's been very easy to just harass the Grekum and stop them from getting the resources they need. And it turns out that if you don't do that, the Firepods are just as powerful as ever. Anyway, back when Recuser was about 30 seconds up from when we were looking, we see that Cepipods are being built and more Firepods being built as well. Quite a few Cepis also. It looks like Cyberboss is prepared for an air attack that to come from Recuser, but nothing's coming up yet. Mostly he's building up his air forces. While Recusor, just double checking, he is getting he is getting teleporters and chronoporters, so he definitely is trying to prepare himself, or not really prepare himself, post prepare himself. He hasn't got the ability to actually prepare himself, unfortunately, given that his assault on his base happened in the unplayable past. But he's post pairing himself, getting that's not a word. I just can't think of any better term. So bear with me. Getting a chronoporter to send back some units to actually deal with the Farpod as it happened. And up in the future here we have... Not the future, sorry. The less less past. Further in the future we see that Recuser is actually fast-forwarding through this. I don't think he's actually chronoporting anything yet. Because normally you'd pause when you chronoport. Very rarely do people actually fast-forward to chronoport. I'm not sure what he's fast-forwarding for. However, Cyberboss is setting up some units. Back when he is about 30 seconds up, he is setting up an attack force. A very large attack force to deal with this. Deal with this one little base of Recuser. Both players actually don't really have a lot of bases. Cyberboss has his one main, and Recuser has his main. No real expansions. Back about two minutes down, we see that Recuser does have not really much change. Another expansion, another RP setting up. But I think that's... No, that's a new RP. So jumping back about two minutes, sorry about that. We see that the RPs are being built. Recuser is trying to get a bit better economic base. He definitely has a good LC base, though. He needs a QP base. And he really needs to get his Corona Porter working so he can actually start sending some units back and dealing with what... Cyberboss has sent to him. And it looks like Cyberboss isn't really going to be damaging him too much, just double-checking the blue wave. Nothing going on there. So Cyberboss not sending anything back yet. He could easily at any time with any of these units send stuff back. Which is why I'm going to double-check his point in time. And at his point in time, about three minute, or two minutes up, we see that he is actually doing a lot of damage to the base. He's going to jump back about 30 seconds. 30 seconds before that, he sends a piece... No, Chrono Bomb in. Chrono Bomb everything forward. And yeah, that's going to be pretty powerful. So he's Chronoporting away the base, the base is going to chronoport up to about here, and that's going to be devastating for Recuser. Recuser really needs to use that chronoporter right now to get some units to chronicle themselves and use that as support just to get out of the way, too. Because that chronobomb is going to be incredibly annoying. So about the 10, 10 19 mark, chronoport occurs, and oh my, everything's chronofragging itself, too. So we're back at the present, right? So the 12 minute mark when everything chronoports back to itself, and now it's being teleported away, so the Chrono Bomb will be evaded, and in two seconds, one second, we have the Chrono Bomb coming in, and will actually do nothing, so the Chrono Bomb will not do nothing, it will destroy the base, but the units will still be around, so this assault force from Cyberboss will not be as powerful as it was before. It's coming now, however, the Hierarchy Leader is at the front, Special Ops very useful for close protection, but he needs more than one if he wants to get rid of these Farpods. Farpods not cloaking, however, Cyberboss back in the future, come on, watch this battle, it's going to be very exciting. Firepods, one firepod destroyed, the other firepod almost destroyed, another firepod is cloaked, another special ops, however, is ready to get rid of it, that has been destroyed, and a third special ops is hanging out just to try to get rid of it, no one's actually attacking with special ops help, green time up has changed something, it looks like, back in the past here, just double checking the 1019 mark, which is when the chrono bomb occurred, teleporter was actually destroyed back here, so, unfortunately for Recuser, he never managed to teleport his units away, the teleporter got unbuilt, looks like something got in the way when it was trying to be built, so it didn't actually manage to get built, Meaning that he wasn't able to get his teleporter up, which means he wasn't able to get his, te his teleporter away. So the green time is going to be far more devastating for Recuser, because that means that that's the time on which all of his units were actually chronoported to the future, which would be out right now, actually. And yes, Recuser has declared GG as a result. So it's a good game, very well done, very good use of chronoporting by both players, but especially by... Oh, no, sorry, not by both players, by Cyberboss. <laughs> it was... Almost got it for Recuser, but he didn't double-check that the teleporter was actually going to be causally consistent. 
So, nicely done by Cyberboss. Really nice use of chronoporting. I'm very impressed. I haven't seen Grekin do that in months, so that was really cool. One thing that would have been a good idea, like I said, it would have been to chronoport, like, chrono clone the units with that chronoporter when you still had it. Being that the chronoporter was both more causally consistent and was going to be allowing him to get more units. Or just chronoporting them slightly to the future to dodge the chrono bomb, but still be able to deal damage to the troops as they came in. So they dodge the chrono bomb, they the chrono porter, and the chrono bomb would come, and then they still have a chrono porter in the future. You can do some echo attacks with that. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a bit of a short game. I think I might actually have time to cast another game, to be honest. Let's just see. So let's cut this down and...